And now, for the prophetic word of 2024. Woo! Who's ready? Who's excited? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to release the prophetic word of 2024. There's a prophetic word that God releases every year. Last year, 2023, or this year still for one more day. It's still, we still have one more day, remember? <laughs> and it's in the morning, too. <laughs> so 2023 was the year that the promise shall be fulfilled. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I have seen many promises of God fulfilled this year and him be faithful to his word. Is that anyone here? Give God a praise. Hallelujah. God, first of all, God, we thank you for every promise that has been fulfilled this year. We thank you, Lord, for giving us promises. You don't have to do that. We could just be kind of in the dark and just not knowing what to expect and not have as much hope. Or direction but you give us promises and we thank you God even though sometimes it's like hard to wait because you, you just want it to be there right now but we thank you that you are a God of promises that you give us promises that you give us direction where we're supposed to aim for and and what how to obey you so that we can see that promise fulfilled we thank you for giving us these promises we thank you for lifting our hope and our faith and making us more alive with these promises promises that that expectancy we have like a baby that's going to be born we thank you jesus for your precious promises and we thank you for being faithful to all your promises that everyone are yes and amen and we thank you for fulfilling all of the promises this year for every person in this place that you have fulfilled a promise or promises we thank you we praise you we thank you for fulfilling promises here at fivefold church this year we thank you jesus amen Amen. Hallelujah. So this year is a new, or 2024, will be a new prophetic word for this year. And this is what I'm going to release today and teach on what this word means for you. Amen. So Luke 4, verse 18 The Spirit of the Lord is on me, or upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Hallelujah. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Passion Translation says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to bring hope for the poor, freedom for the brokenhearted, and new eyes for the blind. And to preach to prisoners, you are set free. I have come to share the message of Jubilee, for the time of God's great acceptance has begun. For the time of God's great acceptance has begun. I'm going to release the word and then I will explain it right now. So the word of 2024, the prophetic word of 2024, is that this is the year to catch the wave, the wave of revival. This year is the acceptable year of the Lord. It is the year, the time of God's great acceptance has begun. God is causing a big revival wave to come and wash upon the whole world. Over every nation, a great wave is coming. A mighty revival wave. We have been in revival now for some years. But this revival is about to progress in a level that we have not seen yet. God is making this massive wave of revival to come this year. God released this word to me. And the following day, which was a few days ago, 
I, my parents are here. So usually I'm pretty much staying at home most days, if not traveling all the time. But my parents are here, so I'm going and we're doing things, yeah? We're getting out. And so I, I decided today I'm going to take mom and dad for a hike in Malibu. The second time I've ever done a hike in Malibu, it's gorgeous. You can see the water up in the mountain. And we are driving. As we're driving, I'm looking, and I've lived in L.A. now for 10 years, and I've never seen waves this size in L.A. I've also never seen so many surfers ever in L.A. at one time. And even we are now, we were then hiking. I took so many videos because I couldn't believe how big the waves were. Then we were hiking. I took, I took the hike a couple months ago, and you can't hear the waves once you're hiking up farther. But this time, I could hear the waves, even though we were, we were hiking, like, farther away and high up, because the waves were so big. Then I get home, and I see, do we have the pictures? I see on the news. It's all over the news. Huge waves to hit California coast for third day. This was last night. Bringing uh, uh, California beaches slammed by massive waves. Dangerous monster waves. Rain slam Southern California. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Click the next picture. Click the next picture. Oh, there's only one. Okay. I, I, sh I shared a couple more, but must be we didn't get them, but that's okay. You can see it. You can go Google it. You can see more pictures of these waves. Wow. This is absolutely confirmation from God. This is God's doing. God does signs and wonders. This is a sign and wonder. God spoke this word. And he made these waves to come and be massive. The moment he spoke the word. And, and continuing every day in, this, this, in the last of this year. Speaking of what's to come in this new year. A massive wave of revival sweeping across the whole nation. Across the whole world. Hallelujah. God is amazing. He is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. And so, more specifically, this word. So, so, first of all, I want to say this prophetic word that there will be this massive wave of revival. Um, and, but, but whenever there's a prophetic word, there's always action that we need to take part in. It's not just God's doing this and we just sit back and wait for the word to come. But there's always a, a part we have to play. And so the part, num number one part we have to play is to catch the wave. So really, more specifically, the prophetic word of 2024 is to catch the wave. The wave of revival. You will catch the wave of revival this year in 2024. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 4, 36, all the people were amazed and said to each other, what words are these? With authority and power, he gives words to impure spirits, and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. So what made people to receive Jesus and make word spread supernaturally, revival spread, was the demonstration of the power of God. That, that, that Jesus had power and authority spiritually. That he wasn't just teaching, he wasn't just speaking. But the words he spoke carried power and authority, brought real transformation People experience change when they listened to Jesus speak, to just hear him teach. And also that he was demonstrating the power of God 
to cast demons out. That's, so, so, so it was the, the power of God through his word and the power of God that made demons to go. That made news about him spread. That's how revival broke out in the times of Jesus. That's how, that's how people began to hear about Jesus, come and receive him and, and share the gospel so that we have heard the gospel today to get to this point. It wasn't by wise and persuasive words, by charisma and entertainment that we have heard the gospel today. It all happened back then because of Jesus walking in power and authority and casting out demons. Not just talking about demons, but actually casting them out. And so the revival wave that is coming this year is going to be bigger than most people can imagine. Because when you do it in your own way, when you do it with, when the church does it in its own way, when ministers do it in their own way, meaning not God's way, not this way, not with power and authority and casting out demons and walking in miracles. When you do it your own way, you're not going to get many results. So Christians in general have this um, perception, idea of like the extent at how far the gospel can be, um, can reach people. Like people think that it's so much more limited, that God is so much more limited than he is. People kind of think like for many generations, uh, like how like little Christianity has spread, you know, the fact that there's so many worldly people, there's so many people, so many atheists, whatever, so many people that don't accept Jesus. They think that that's just the status quo and that it will never go beyond that. But that's because there's no power and authority. When we do it Jesus' way, we see miraculous results of the gospel spreading, of people desiring Jesus, wanting to come to church. I love it. It reminds me of these precious, there's a couple precious testimonies saying, this is a miracle. My dad would never come to church, but now he's coming to church. My children never want to come to church, but they want to come to church here. That's such a prophetic testimony of today to show like that when we don't have the power and authority, we are, we, are, we are like stopping God's miraculous hand and we are becoming more of like a organization or club, man-made. There are limits, but there are no limits or boundaries if we will do things God's way and accept God's power and walk in authority and power and cast out demons and let God's power draw people to himself. Amen. Hallelujah. So this revival wave is coming in this kind of way. This revival wave is not coming the old way, the old way of doing things. The revival wave will come because of the power of God that's leading it. That's, that's what the revival wave is. Hallelujah. And the waves are crossing the border lines. So what's so amazing, those pictures that I shared, one of the pictures that I sent, I don't think it got up there, but it showed like the, that there was people that were running from the wave. Like the, it never comes past this border, right? It stays like in the sea. But the wave came out of the sea and onto the sidewalk, and like knocked people over on the sidewalk. So this is prophetic, even what's happened in the natural is prophetic of what God's doing in the spirit. So God is going to cross boundaries, go over boundaries with this revival. The, the places that this revival will reach, the media, the mediums, the mediums, that this revival will reach far and wide. The people, the people that you would never expect to receive Jesus. The influential people 
you will never accept to receive Jesus. The, the transformation that will take place in this world, like never before, by the power of Jesus. Not confined just to the Christians in the church, but we are now becoming such a bright light that many people in the world that never would come to Jesus before will come to Jesus now. Yes. Hallelujah. Isaiah 29, 13. This scripture is one of the important scriptures that goes along with this prophetic word. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Hallelujah. So, the, the, the word of this year is the direction of the word that we have a part to play is very much a um, convicting word, a call to action, a serious, like, command from God to catch the wave. Like, he's speaking to you, position yourself to catch the wave or else you could miss it. Um, and so he's speaking so much to people in the first part of this, this verse, verse 13. These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human roles they have been taught. So God sees so many people in the body of Christ today in this state that deep down they're actually lukewarm. Deep down, though they've seen power of God. They've seen the revival. They, they've seen it. They've seen videos, but they're being like this still. They're still praising God every Sunday. They're still serving God in the church. They're still reading the Bible, praying every day, but deep down, their hearts are far from me because they're not accepting me, God. They're not accepting God in his revival. They're not accepting the move of the Holy Spirit. This is the state of so many people in the body of Christ today. They are content being lukewarm. They are content being the way that these people were being. And God is saying, now it's time to repent, and it's time to get on board with my revival, and it's time to catch this wave of revival, to be a part of this revival so I can use you in this revival. So... You know, God's seeing this state of the body of Christ right now, and he's now, therefore, verse 14. So now, therefore, since this is the state of so much, so many in the body of Christ, I am going to do wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. And so in this year, God will really confound the Christian wise and intelligent we learned last week about weak and foolish things, how God chooses weak and foolish to nullify the things that think they are wise in their own eyes. So God is raising up weak and foolish, his revival army, in this year, and he's going to do even greater wonders. He's been doing such wonders already, but this revival is increasing, it's escalating to a new level of this massive wave where these wonders now will for sure confound the world. These wonders will prove this is God. You can't reject me anymore or, you know, your way is not the right way. My way is the right way. God is saying, you know, he is bringing this, this confounding. I will, uh, this astounding with wonder upon wonder, the wisdom of the wise will perish so the church, church wisdom will perish because this massive wave is taking over. It's so massive, it cannot be ignored. 
Hallelujah. And the wave that is coming is going to surpass your knowledge and understanding. So God is going to be doing exceedingly beyond whatever you could imagine him doing. This is speaking of miracles in your own personal life. God, you, you, you put God in a box, God is going outside of the box. Yes. Your way, you've grown up in church maybe your whole life, and you've, you've just seen God in this one box. You've just seen God only move in this one way. God is going out of the box now. God is going, uh, surpassing, exceeding all of that now in this revival. Hallelujah. So now I, I mentioned, so first of all, there's this massive wave of revival coming in this year. Number two, the first part of the prophetic word direction is that you need to catch the revival wave. Catch the revival wave. The, 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 the third part of this is how to catch the wave. How? Through obedience. So this word is about this year, I need to obey God. So I don't miss him. I don't miss his move. I don't miss being a vessel of him in his move, in his revival. That's really what this word is about. Being so serious about obedience to God like never before. Not just obedience in whatever way, but uh, like obedience according to God's principles. I talk about principles a lot here, some of you know. But like how God is a God of principles and order. Like there are certain parts of the kingdom of God that are so important to every believer's life that we can't ignore. We can't just do Christianity our own way, relationship with God our own way. Because some people, they forget the principles of God, the important aspects of the kingdom that God is calling us to do, to make a part of our lives and instead, they're just hearing their own imagination, hearing an angel of light, and thinking it's obedience sometimes, maybe. Like obedience to God. So it's very important to not neglect these important principles. By principles, I mean understanding that the work of God is the most important thing to God in the world. Because that's what leads to souls being saved, the sick being healed, the oppressed being free, the dead raising to life, is the work of God. The ministry. Everything that Jesus was doing on this earth, it was, it was the work of God. Amen? It was the work of God, and it was going to the mountain to pray. But that was his whole life. So that shows God's heart. That shows what's most important to him and the most important thing that we should be doing on this earth is the work of God. The work of God. Not being lazy and just staying at home only reading your Bible and praying. But not actually doing work of God. Not actually serving God. So, the church is where... The, the church, the, the, the house of God, the church is where so much of the big works are being done. That's what we see in, with the apostles. It, it says that it, whenever we see all of the mir mighty miracles happening, it's usually at the church. It talks about how the believers would gather together. They would never neglect gathering. And when they would gather, they would devote themselves to the apostles' teachings and they would continually be in awe and wonder at the miracles performed by the hands of the apostles, it says in the book of Acts. So that shows us that in the Acts church, the big works that were being done, miracles and equipping and impartation was being done at the house of God in the church. And then the people in the church would be equipped, they would receive impartation, so that then 
the work of God could extend beyond the church. But the work of God can't extend beyond the church if the people don't come to the church and receive. Receive equipping and impartation. And have the example, like Paul says, follow me as I follow Jesus. They come, they watch, they look at what it looks like to serve God, to be a servant of God. And that's how they learn. And that's how they're transformed to be like Jesus. Amen? So that's just one example of a big principle of God's kingdom is that his church is where so much of the work is being done. So we must make sure we don't neglect gathering regularly. And we must make sure we're not just sitting in the chairs, but we are active. We are, we are, we are devoting ourselves to the teaching so we can be transformed ourselves. But also we will help out with the work of God in the house of God. Amen. So that's a big part of this word, catch the wave through obedience. It doesn't mean obedience the way that you want to obey God, but obeying God, really obeying God, like obeying him for what he is really speaking to you to do. And uh, the big thing that God is speaking is having to do with his work, is having to do with his revival spreading. He wants you to serve him in his work, in his house. Because the more people that will do things for God, serve him in the house of God, and the, the work of God that, goes, that takes place here extends to the whole world, to the whole body of Christ, the more of you that will do something for God, will, will sacrifice, and will be a servant for God, the more work that God can do, the more people he will be able to reach. I've seen this literally happen. I've seen when one person stepped up and helped even with such things like, like editing and podcasts and just things that I can't do everything. I've seen just one person just started to help in one area, in that area. And I immediately saw a shift where thousands of more subscribers and followers suddenly appeared because of one person helping. So thousands more people were able to receive the word of God and deliverance and be saved because another person, just even just one person, could help lift the load of the work of God. Hallelujah. So this is so important. You can look and see um, a, a, an anointed minister of God. You can look and see and you just... You, you can look at them in the wrong way. Like, they're the, they're the ones to, to feed and do everything, and who am I? I'm just here to receive. I can't do much. That's wrong thinking completely. God wants to use you, and we are a body of Christ. We have different roles, but your role is very important. We're on a team. So for me, I, I, I see myself for who I am. I know that I can't reach. I will be limited with how God can use me if it's just me. Like in this church, if it's just me, or if it's just two or three or four or five or 10 of us or 15 of us, we will be limited for what, and God will be limited for what he wants to do through us to make this revival spread and to reach more people. But if all hands are on deck, God can do exactly what he wants to do. God can make the wave grow bigger. God can save more people and save them quicker. And you all are important. I see even now last week's message was prophetic for this message today. Because I see some of you have wrong thinking. You're, you're looking, maybe you're looking at me or other people too impressively. And you're forgetting that I'm a weak and foolish thing. You're a weak and foolish thing. I'm a weak and foolish thing. But when we obey... God's power moves through us. So it doesn't matter what we, what we have right now. What matters is that we obey God and then God's power comes through us. So, so anything that I'm able to do is nothing to do with my parents' genes, you know, how God created me. It's not to do with that so much. It's not, to do, it's not having to do with my ability 
But everything that I'm able to do for God is having completely to do with God's power moving through me. So it doesn't matter someone's, someone's born with many gifts, someone's born with they don't think many gifts. God can use them equally the same. Because God's not limited through anybody. It's, it's his supernatural power moving through you that, that does the miracles. Hallelujah. Luke 5, verse 36. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. So in this move that God has brought, it is the new wine. It is the new wine. The, the Hallelujah. The anointing, the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets that have been lost, deliverance, the casting out of demons, the healing of the sick, the miracle signs and wonders, the preaching with authority and power, the true heart of Jesus in leaders and every believer of purity, of humility, all of these things that I've just named, they're all the new wine. That's all the new wine. All of these things I just named have by and large been missing in the body of Christ. Apostles and prophets have been missing. The fivefold ministry has been missing. Anointing has been missing by and large. Pure, humble hearts have been missing in leadership and in believers alike, all believers alike, by and large. That's the old wine skin. And God is doing this new move now in this revival. And it's not looking like that at all. It's not looking like just pastors and teachers and some evangelists. It's not looking like a church without the power of God. It's not looking like impure hearts that are jealous and selfish and prideful. That's in the past. That's gone. And the two can't mix. The two cannot mix. So this is the new wine now. And as the scripture says, you cannot mix the old wineskin with the new wine. It will burst. It will break. So in the body of Christ, most people have old wineskin in them. Probably 99.9 or even 100% pretty much of us have had old wineskin they've had to shed. And some of you have more you need to shed. Old wineskin means old ways of doing things, old doctrines that are actually religious and not truly the pure doctrine from Jesus of how his kingdom really is and how he wants us to do things, of how he wants us to have church, of how he wants us to follow him, what praying really looks like, what fasting really looks like, what ministry really looks like, what preaching really looks like, what casting of demons really looks like. We need the new wine, the, the real revelation, the pure revelation from the Holy Spirit, not the old religious ways of doing things, which have become like the Pharisees, where you're, you don't even know why you're doing things. You think they're in the Bible, but they're not even in the Bible. So many things that are just done out of tradition, people literally think it's in the Bible. It has to be, but it's not. <laughs> but they just follow what they have known. They just follow. Hallelujah. So in it, a big part of catching the wave and the obedience is looking like repositioning yourself. Repositioning yourself out of the old wineskin. Getting out of that. For a surfer to catch a wave, they got to be positioned right. They can't have something holding them back. 
It's got to be them and the surfboard. The surfboard's got to be right. Amen. They can't be holding on to old things, heavy things, or they won't be able to catch the wave right. So you need to shed your old wineskin and take this very seriously. Now is the time to drop all of the questioning. There's so many people that are questioning, questioning. Well, I don't know if Christians can really have demons or are apostles really around today or can women be preachers and pastors or um, what is the anointing? I don't know about that. There's so many uh, questions that some people have simply because of old wineskin that they haven't dropped. If they would drop, let go of the old wineskin, they would hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly and they would see it in the word of God. Their eyes would open up and they would say, this is biblical. I can see now. This is the truth. This is the pure truth. But when you're holding on to the old wineskin, you can't see rightly. The pure in heart shall see God, the Bible says. So when you're holding on to old wineskin, it's, you're not pure. It's not pure. Religion is not pure. Religion is impure. Like, by religion, if some of you don't know what I mean, I'm talking about Pharisees. You can also call it the Pharisee spirit. The way the Pharisees were. We must do things this way just out of religion, just out of tradition and rules. And we, this is the, God's way. Tradition, rules, God can't do a new thing. I'm going to judge anybody who comes with anything else than this. So then Jesus comes and they missed him completely. The pure in heart shall see God. They were not pure primarily because of the old wineskin they were holding on to. It was keeping them from seeing. So this year, you need to let go of your old wineskin. Stop questioning God. Stop questioning the new thing he is doing. You've had time. He's given you time. Grow up, body of Christ. Because, because you'll miss it. Otherwise, time is of the essence right now. I've been speaking this prophetically. That time, God has been giving time. God has brought his revival now for several years now. He's been giving the body of Christ time. It's not too late. Maybe you've been stubborn and you haven't accepted God's move. You haven't been a part. You've been one foot in. There's still time. But the wave's coming. Don't miss it. This is the year you can miss it. Don't miss it. By by that I mean don't miss it. I mean God wants you to be a big part of this revival. But you cannot be trusted to be a big part of this revival if you are not obedient. If you you keep holding on to your old wineskin years later. You can't be trusted. You can still receive some. You can still watch, but you will lose the privilege and honor of being a powerful vessel of God, his anointing in this revival. You will just be more like a bystander. That's what I mean by don't miss it. It's the time right now that God is raising up his revival army, and this revival army, this revival army, you here, we, you are the leaders. We are the leaders in this revival. And so this is the time to catch the wave and be among the first. Be like the disciples of Jesus, the first that can help others, lead others, disciple others. Be an example for others. This is a precious time to have the fear of God, to walk in obedience so you don't miss it. Amen? Amen. So God wants God wants a heart that is humble that sees the value of serving God that sees the value of being a part of his revival that is humble and will just be like Lord here I am send me here I am 
I will be a vessel for you, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it. I am a servant of you. So I, 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 I give my life to you, God. I really give everything. Some of you need to surrender deeper. Some of you are not taking seriously the aspect of being a servant of God, of serving him in his work, in this revival. This is what God is asking you right now, to have a humble heart, an obedient heart, a servant heart. Some of you have been listening maybe for several years now. You've been, you've been a part of Fivefold Church, sitting and listening and receiving, and that's good. That's fine because sometimes God wants you to just listen because you need to grow, and he needs to transform your heart and mold your heart. He needs you to just focus on that for a little bit. But it's time now to step up to the plate and serve. It's time now to ask yourself and to ask God, how can I help? Maybe there's more I can be doing, more I can be assisting in this, in this ministry at Fivefold Church. In this revival. And position yourself. Position yourself to be a servant. A servant of God. There are, whether it's, some, maybe it's something little, big or small, God wants to use you. And he wants you to start thinking in this new way. I'm a servant and I must be, a, I must be serving God here. I must be serving God here where I'm planted. I must serve him at Fivefold Church. I must serve him in this revival. Not just sit and listen, but I must serve him. There are so many different areas that are needed to help assisting, assist with the work of God. It can be like playing instruments or singing on the worship band. Or, or so many different aspects in media, with camera, with editing. So many different things here in the church physically that you can assist with. That you don't even have to have um, maybe big skills for. But there's still things, even little things that you can help with. And it's time now to offer up all your gifts, all your abilities. If, you ha if you're being shy and you're sitting on a gift that God wants to use, it's time to be strong and courageous and surrender everything, your gifts that God's given you, to the work of God. God, in this revival, the, in this revival in the next year, the standard is going to rise a lot. The standard of excellence is going to, to be raised. Excellence is very important in the work of God. Excellence. That things are done with excellence. That there's no kind of distraction that would prevent people from receiving from God. But that things are done in excellence at a high level, high standard. People in the world should look at the church and not see the church as some, like, outdated thing that doesn't care much. But they should see excellence and professionalism and quality. That's one of the ways that we are alike. God uses things like this for us to shine bright, to be like a billboard to people in the world, to draw them into his church, to him. Amen? Amen. So we can't neglect the excellent side. We cannot just rely only on the anointing and not come with excellence because we will miss reaching many people that care about excellence and understand that God's a God of excellence. And so they, they skip right by you. And I speak this to say that it's time to step up in serving God with your gifts, with your abilities, with things that you are holding back. It's time. The standard is rising now. Amen. Amen. Seek, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. When you seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. The, the first part of this, the kingdom of God, is speaking about the work of God. Is speaking about God's work 
on this earth. So when you're seeking that, that means you are serving God in the work. You're being a part of the kingdom work on this earth. Hallelujah. And it says, when you seek first the kingdom of God, so that's really talking about the work of God and his righteousness. That's speaking about the character of God, uh, a relationship with God, intimacy with God. So we need both. Amen? So when you seek those, the Bible says, then all of these things shall be added unto you. All of these things. To summarize that, it means your needs and your desires. Not just any desires, your godly desires, the pure and good desires of your heart that are pure, that, that God would love to bless you with and has planned to bless you with. But these blessings, these desires of your heart come after you seek first the kingdom of God. Then these things will be added to you. Hallelujah. It says in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So when you give to God, when you serve him in his work, when you offer up and give your abilities, your gifts, your time, your service, then it will be given to you. Then desires of your heart will be, God will then give to you. Needs in your life, God will release then to you. And so this, this word of the year is very exciting because God is giving you this massive opportunity to serve him like never before and be a part of this revival, literally make history. Like the first disciples you get to make history. You are making history in heaven and for all eternity. But not just that, but there's more. That This is such a big principle that people miss. Serving God is the best. It's the best. Because this is how you receive. This is how you are blessed. This is how you are blessed with so many blessings you could never even dream or imagine about and have protection to. This is the principle of God that so many people miss because the devil tries hard to make you blind to it. Because it's so simple and easy. Just serve God. Just put him first. Just, just make his kingdom, serving him in his kingdom, the most important thing in your life. And God takes care of the rest. You don't have to strive and try to get these needs to come. To get these dreams to come. They will come on your lap. As the word says. The doors will just open up. I've seen it happen in my own life. The best advice I could give anybody in this world is to serve God. That's the answer for everything. You have health problems. You have health problems? Serve God. You will have health given to you. You have money problems? You have, you're in poverty? Serve God. Provision, supernatural provision will be released to you, and there will be protection upon it. You have relationship problems? Serve God. God will restore your marriage, your relationships, and your family, your children. As we've heard today, it just happened when she started to serve God? You have problems in your business? Serve God. God will take care of it. Whatever your need is, whatever the desires of your heart are that are pure, just serve God, and God will just give them to you himself. They will come from him. They will come without sorrow, and they will be beyond what you asked thought, dream, prayed for. Hallelujah. 
So this year is so exciting because if you can just take God's word seriously, not only do you have this great honor of being a vessel of him in this revival and playing a big part of this revival, end time revival spreading across the world and many souls being saved, healed, and delivered, but also this could, be the, this could be the very best year of your life because of just seeing even the blessings in your own life, your own personal life, that have simply been the product, the fruit of serving God and putting him first like never before. Anybody excited about that? Yeah. Woo! Amen. Amen. So it's time to get serious like never before about serving God and putting him first, putting his work first, putting serving him in his work in the church here first. All these things will be added to you. God is not a liar. God is, I've seen it happen in my life and it will happen in your life too. You will see your life blessed like never before as you put God first, serving him in his work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's time to catch the wave of revival. I am so expectant and excited for 2024 like never before. God has such massive plans with this wave that will shock us, that will shock the world. God is going to bring such an increase in this revival, a new level this year, and his will shall be done. His promises shall continue to come to pass, and this revival will grow and grow and grow and be a massive wave that will make the news. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We are going to give to God right now, and this is going to be a special seed today. So as you're starting to prepare your seed, just keep listening to me. Keep your ears open, because this seed is going to be planted upon this word for your life for this year. It's a special word. Like it's making, it, the, seed, the seed is powerful, when you are sowing with intention, it does what it's set out to do in the spiritual realm. So if you want to connect yourself, for example, to this word more powerfully than just saying amen and taking notes, but even more powerfully, connect yourself with a seed today. When you're sowing this, this is you saying I receive this word, God, and I want this word to come to pass in my life. I do not want to miss this wave of revival. I want to be a powerful vessel of you, God. I don't want to miss out on anything that you have planned for me. I don't want to be distracted this year like I was last year. I don't want to be too timid and shy and withhold my gifts and time and talents. I don't want to be selfish. This is the year, Lord, that I will serve you, really serve you with all of me, holding nothing back. This will be the year that I surrender every part of myself, every part of my gifts, my time, my life. This year, I offer all my gifts, all my time, my whole body, my whole life to you, Lord. And I trust you, Lord, that you will help me. You will help me stay focused you will help me be strong and courageous. Maybe if it's serving in an area that you felt nervous about serving in. I trust you that you will keep me in your will. This is what you're doing with this seed. It's like a, a prayer to God and connecting to this word. Bringing more weight in the spiritual realm to this word. Hallelujah. So if you'd like to sow... To give, we have envelopes on the back of the chairs. If you want to give online, you can scan the QR code here or also on the back of the chairs has a QR code. And you can also go to 5fchurch.org give. 
And, and those of you watching online, you can go to the link in my bio on Instagram or TikTok, and you can go to 5fchurch.org slash give. When you've prepared your seed, you can lift it in the air uh, or lift your phone if you're giving online. I declare that upon these seeds, may you be connected to this prophetic word, this word from God for 2024. I speak protection over you that no scheme of the devil can take you away from God's will, from what God has planned for your life in 2024, for what God has planned you to do for him in his revival in 2024. Nothing can take you from God's hand. And I declare this anointing to come upon you with this seed, that you would be new in this new year, that you would be that as you are surrendering to God right now, that you would truly be new. That the old wineskin is left in 2023. And you have a new wineskin now in this new year. I declare you are new. I declare you are no longer a sinner. You are no longer a slave to sin. But this year, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will live to please God. You will live to serve him. You will live with a pure heart and in humility and in obedience every day in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I declare lack to go from your life and abundance to increase now. Abundance, more abundance in Jesus' name. Doors to open up for provision for your life now in Jesus' name. And I declare that upon this seed, upon you being obedient to God's prophetic word of 2024, that you would see the desires of your heart be fulfilled. That your needs and that you have in your life, they would come. You would not be in lack. They would come as you serve God. That you could testify that this verse is true for your life and this year. That you give and it will be given to you. That you seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added to you in Jesus' name. Let this be for your life now. These blessings come. These things be added now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.